Hello everyone. Here we are going to discuss about laminar, turbulent and transitional flow. And without keep discussing most of the mathematics, we'll try to discuss only the physical description of this whole phenomena. So the basic characteristics of laminar flow are that the flow occurs in layers of fluid particles. So one fluid particles, uh, one fluid layer moves over another layer and in this way, as you can see, the different layers are here shown by different colors of particles. And as we move away from a solid boundary, let's say, the velocity increases. And any relative motion between adjacent layers is resisted by the intermolecular forces. So those intermolecular forces give rise to viscosity. So if one layer tries to move at a different velocity than the adjacent layers, then the nearby layers will try to remove that, uh, reduce that relative velocity and all of them would try to move at the same velocity. So every time there is a difference in velocity, the viscosity or the intermolecular forces will try to resist it. Another characteristic is that the streamlines of individual particles do not intersect one another, that is where in this case we can imagine in case of in layer terms that is if one layer is moving at a certain level the other layer will be moving at a different level and so on and they will not intersect one another in other words there is no mixing of flow between different layers and another characteristic is that no slip condition and boundary can be assumed that means the particles or the layer which is touching the solid boundary is not going to move. So that means it will stick to the solid boundary and whatever is the velocity of the solid boundary that will be the velocity of the fluid layer. But sometimes these layers do not behave in such an orderly manner and they break or bend sometimes. So when do they do that? It is observed that the layers start to break and flow in uh, different paths, that is flow of different particles intersect one another. We observe those kind of situations in the following cases. So first one is when velocity increases. That is, what happens here is that the particles are just too fast to keep them ordered or layered. So if velocity is like this, they are moving in a certain velocity, they will be moving in layers. But if the velocity increases, then the layers will not be behaving like uh, in an orderly manner and they will become quite chaotic or random. Another case where it can be seen is when the density of fluid increases. That is, if the particles themselves become heavier and once they become heavier, if one particle just moves in a different direction because it's very difficult to keep the heavy particle in check so the intermolecular force or the viscosity will not be able to keep them in layers and they will just move here and there and giving rise to this kind of chaotic or random motion another case is where um, the viscosity of the fluid decreases there is the intermolecular force between the particles, it will decrease, therefore the bond is not strong enough to keep the layers uniform or ordered and therefore they will just move here and there. So they are just too loosely attached to keep them flowing in an ordered or layered manner. Another, the last one is uh, when the characteristic dimension of flow increases. Here I'm using the word characteristic dimension because it, this dimension differs in different types of flows. But in general, what happens is that there are just too many particles, too much fluid moving. So it's very difficult to keep them ordered or layered. So they just move like this. As you can see here in this bottom picture, 
the particles which are close to the solid boundary are kind of moving in well defined layers but as we move further and further that means if we move away from the solid boundary the particles behave they move in a random manner in a turbulent way this characteristic dimension is something that characterizes the flow for example in case of pipe flow the characteristic dimension is the di uh, diameter of the pipe in case of um, a channel flow it will be uh, the depth of flow if suppose a liquid is flowing over a surface suppose a viscous liquid we have dropped it on some kind of table while it is flowing over the table then the thickness of that layer is the characteristic dimension so if that increases so in case of a pipe the pipe diameter if it increases or if in case of a channel if the depth increases in case of a channel actually it is both depth and width and all those things and therefore we generally try to define some other dimension which takes care of both depth and width of the river or channel and in case of some kind of fluid moving over a surface it is the thickness now we have accepted that as these things happen these quantities increase or decrease the fluid starts to behave in a random way or what we call a turbulent flow but what causes this randomness or uh, rather what initiates what starts the randomness so in a way we can say that any small disturbance in the flow field can start that deviation from the layers they can break the layers or bend the layers so those disturbances can be uh, irregularities or roughnesses of the boundary walls if the boundary wall is not that smooth then at some point one of the layers will break so that will break the adjacent layer that will break the adjacent layers and that way the whole flow will become turbulent then changes in temperature if one part is hot another part is cold then the hot part will expand the cold part will con uh, condense and that will again cause some disturbances then external forces suppose a fluid is flowing somebody is just shaking the whole pipe suppose or something somebody is in, uh, inserting some other objects into the flow so those kind of external forces or agents will be there vibrations and sometimes impurities in fluid if the fluid is not pure and there are some solid impurities in that case also those kind of disturbances may start Now, sometimes those disturbances, once started, can again die down or damp down. So, this damping of the random behavior or the turbulence can be uh, described like this. If the velocity is small, if the flow is moving very slowly, in that case, if the, any kind of disturbance appears, because the uh, velocities and uh, the particles are not moving too fast the intermolecular force will again try to bring back it to order and the layer flow will again be re uh, reclaimed or restored but if the velocity is very high the fluid is moving very fast in that case a small disturbance can disturb the whole flow and the viscosity will not be able to tie everything together another case is if the fluid is viscous that is if the intermolecular force is very high then any kind of disturbance can be very rapidly dampened down if any layer is trying to uh, mix with another layer because the intermolecular forces are very high it will not be allowed to do that and it will be again flowing in its original layer but if the, uh, the viscosity is weak or the intermolecular forces are weak in that case any kind of disturbance will be uh, very easily disturbing the entire flow field another effect is for heavier fluids if the particles are moving uh, are already very heavy in that case whatever is their velocity they will try to continue it 
and it is difficult to initiate turbulence or initiate any kind of disturbance but once that uh, is started once something is significantly disturbed that disturbance again spreads across the flow field and it becomes very difficult to again regain the laminar state of flow and the last one is if the dimension of flow the characteristic dimension that is in case of pipe if the diamet uh, diameter of the pipe is large if in case of channels the depth of channel or width of channel is large and so on so in that case there is just more space to move around and therefore it will be very difficult to keep the particles move in one uh, in parallel layers so this this degree of randomness is called the turbulence so this turbulence increases as we already have established with increasing velocity increasing density increasing dimension and decreasing viscosity so if we put all of them uh, as uh, according to proportionality with the turbulence the degree of turbulence we have a number dimensionless number called reynolds number and that Reynolds number will be rho v d by mu where rho is density as we can see it is in the numerator similarly v is velocity and d is the diameter or the dimension and since the, uh, the turbulence decreases with viscosity so viscosity is in the denominator so this is called Reynolds number actual mathematical derivation of this or explanation for this Reynolds number We'll do it sometime later. So it was found that flow remains laminar below a certain value of Reynolds number. And above a certain value, the flow becomes completely turbulent. These values were first obtained by Osborne Reynolds in 1883. So he conducted an experiment which is famously known as the Reynolds experiment. So he did this experiment in case of pipes. So he took a pipe where water was flowing and then he injected with a smaller needle a colored uh, or dyed mix uh, of solution of water which had a color. Generally it is potassium permanganate. And he injected this dyed water into the larger pipe and he found that when the Reynolds number is below 2000, the dye flowed in a straight streak line. Now I guess you know what is a streak line. So at this point, if he injected the colored water, it remained here and till, it, uh, till the water came out of the pipe, it remained in a line. As the Reynolds number increased, so Reynolds number can be increased either by increasing the diameter of the pipe or by increasing the velocity or by decreasing the viscosity and so on. So F, uh, when this is increased between a range of 2000 to 4000, the streak line remained wavy or zigzag. So there was some amount of mixing, but it was not completely mixed. And when the Reynolds number was more than 4000, the dye mixed completely with the fluid. And later on, after lots of experiment with different fluids and different diameters of pipes, it was found that for Reynolds number less than 2000 in circular pipes, the flow actually remains laminar. However, the upper limit is not very well defined. Sometimes at a higher Reynolds number also, there may be, it may, the flow may not be completely turbulent. Some parts of the flow may be laminar, some parts of the flow may be turbulent and so on. But uh, in case of the lower limit, it was very well accepted almost universally that at 2000, in case of circular pipe, below 2000, the flow will be laminar. Now, there are different criteria for different types of flows. So for example, in case of circular pipes, the Reynolds number limit for laminar flow is uh, 2000. For flow between parallel plates, when flow takes place between 
two plates in between two plates then uh, Reynolds number below which it will remain laminar is 1000 and in case of open channels it is 50 and in case of flow around spheres it is only one but why is this criteria different for different types of flow let's try to understand in case of pipes flow can take place freely only on in one dimension that is along the pipe length but in the other directions it is not free to move it can move around a little bit but there is the pipe boundary so it cannot cross that and therefore even at a higher velocity or higher dimension or lower viscosity there is a chance of maintaining the laminar nature of the flow and therefore at a higher Reynolds number also the flow remains laminar in case of flow between two parallel plates unlike a pipe flow one more dimension is opened as we can see if flow takes place in between two pipes it can move in this direction but it can move also in this direction so that means there is more room to move around and because we have restricted uh, we have removed the restriction therefore even at lower velocities the flow will try to move around and become turbulent therefore the Reynolds number limit is less than 2000 and it is 1000 only if it's an open channel it can move freely in one dimension obviously while another dimension is open here and this dimension is open to the atmosphere or the environment so there is even more freedom to move so therefore in this case the Reynolds number limit is only 50 so if it is above 50 then it becomes either transitional or uh, turbulent in case of flow around a sphere what happens is that is the flow is not confined it is just open and it is moving around a certain solid boundary solid surface so in this case all three dimensions are open fluid can move in all the directions so therefore even at very small velocities the flow will become either tra transitional or turbulent that means it can move around in all the directions so it will move around in all directions and therefore the limit for laminar flow for flow around the sphere is only one so we can summarize in a more structured way that the flow becomes turbulent at a lower Reynolds number if the degree of freedom is more in case of pipe the degree of freedom is only one it could move in only one direction but in case of flow around the sphere it can move in all three dimensions and therefore the uh, Reynolds number limit for laminar flow is smaller I hope you have some understanding of the physical nature of this classification of Reynolds num uh, number and laminar and turbulent flow we will discuss the mathematical details in some other lecture.